So that's going to eliminate some of our earlier troubleshooting steps that we had to do on R1 and R3 when we looked at the interfaces. So let's go ahead and do a show IP BGP summary on R1 and we can see that we have a neighbor statement for R2 which is 166.0.0.2 the remote AS in this case is 200 which is correct this is an external BGP connection and we see that the status is that it's almost been down for 28 minutes the state is active so that is not good So the next step we want to do in this case is from router one's perspective, let's go ahead and take a look at the running configuration on R1. Let's do a show run pipe to begin BGP. And what we can see is we have a neighbor statement for 166.0.0.2 with a remote AS of 200. Again, this is correct. This is our neighbor statement, our external BGP neighbor statement for R2. And it doesn't look like we're doing any filtering or anything inside of BGP that would be prohibiting a neighbor relationship from forming between R1 and R2. So let's go ahead and go on R1. We'll do a show run interface serial 00. Again, we're going to take a look at the physical interface between R1 and R2. And we can see that we just have the basic IP address command and a clock rate specified. So there's no filtering done on the interface as well. So the next step is, and we verified that again on R1, we can ping router 2. So let's go to router 2 and see if there's anything going on. Again, if I do a show IP BGP summary, we can see that we do have a neighbor statement on R2 towards R, R. I'm sorry, we have a neighbor statement on R2 towards router one, which is 166.0.0.1. We see that it is for remote AS 100, and we can see that our up down time is almost 29 minutes in the active state, which is not good. We should see this as established and we should be receiving prefixes from our neighbor so right now it appears as though we have a BGP neighbor adjacency problem let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration the BGP configuration on R2 but first let's go ahead and see if we can ping We'll do a ping to 166.0.0.1 and we can see that we have reachability. So the next thing we want to do on R2 is we will do a show run pipe to begin BGP. Again we want to check BGP, the BGP configuration just to make sure that we don't have any filtering or anything going on and we can look we see that we're running BGP for AS200 which is correct according to our diagram we have a neighbor statement for 166.0.0.1 with a remote AS of 100 so again this is our external BGP peering relationship between R2 and R1 so that looks correct so the next thing we can do is do a show run interface serial 00 and, and look at the physical interface on R2 connected to R1 and we can see that we have an IP address on the interface and we also see that we have a access list inbound so this may be causing us issues because we never know what's going on with the ACL we can do a show IP access list to look at the ACL in this case the access list is 100 and we can see that we have three sequences so number 10 and 20 look like they are denying TCP looks like number 10 is denying TCP from any 
source to any destination equal to BGP and we see 97 matches. Then we also see sequence number 20 which says that we are denying TCP from any source that's equal to BGP to any destination. And we see that we have 375 matches. So it appears as though this access list, this ACL number 100 that's inbound on R2's serial 00 interface, it appears as though this is affecting our BGP traffic. Again, BGP uses TCP port number 179 to communicate between the neighbor relationship. And so anything that's filtering this port and this TCP traffic, this TCP traffic for BGP port number 179 is going to be very bad in trying to form a BGP neighbor relationship. So it looks like we're denying this traffic on R2 inbound. Let's go back and take a look at our ticket. It says that after you have restored the above task, your junior level network administrator says that he is unable to ping from R3's loopback zero IP address to the loopback zero IP address on R2. Configure the network so that network connectivity is restored. R3 should be able to ping with 100% success from source 183.3.3.3 to destination 174.24.0.1. So again, it's always good to read all the way through the trouble ticket because in some cases, in some trouble tickets, there might be some actions in which you cannot perform to fix the issue. What I mean is that sometimes they might say that you cannot delete any commands from the router or you cannot 